Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Now hopefully you've been following my series of videos about how CPUs work. And in the last video we designed our own CPU instruction set. And I promise as a follow on video, I'll show how to write an assembler for that instruction set. And this video is me fulfilling that promise. So if you want to know how to write your own assembler for your own CPU design in Python, then please let me explain. Okay, let's uh, get going with Gary's amazing uh, assembly language. Of course, I'm using the word here, amazing in a light hearted way. Now, my assumption is that you've watched the previous video, design your own CPU instruction set because the assembler that we're writing today actually compiles a uh, machine code for that instruction set. So this is not for ARM, this is not for x86, not for RISC-V, this is for that instruction set that we designed in that previous video. Now, if you remember from the previous video, every instruction is four bytes long. The first byte gives you the opcode that tells you it's a load or a store or a compare. The second byte tells you what register you're working on. And then the third and the fourth byte give you the data, or they could, of course, uh, have here another register if that's what you're working on. So here are the example of the opcodes. Uh, zero, zero is load. Uh, 16 or 10 is store, 32, 20 is compare, and so on. And then here there are different types of load, so 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, are different types of load depending on whether it's working with a memory address or with another register or whatever we have come up with in that previous video. And remember, registers are really easy. R1 is 1, R2 is 2, R3 is 3, and so on. So load something into R2 becomes 0, 0, zero, two, the first two bytes of our four bytes. And then if 65535 is a FFFF, which it is, then load 65535 into R2 becomes zero, zero for load, R2, FF, FF. So that just shows you the four bytes there that make up our instruction. And so here it is, uh, zero, 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 2 FFF. What we need now is some mnemonics that represent that so that we have an easy way of going from some kind of simple programming language to these four bytes. And here it is, load LD. So I've chosen LD. When you're writing this, you can do whatever you like. You can have LL, LO, LOL. You, can, you really can do whatever you like. LD is a fairly common one for load. Uh, R2, register two. Uh, uh, the value of FFFF. So LD means load. Then you get the destination register. That's the second thing here. Then you get the data, the third thing. And that's just like the instruction format. So here is the important thing to note about this. Our assembler follows the rules of the instruction format. So it makes it really easy to translate these mnemonics into those four bytes that we're looking for in the machine code. And so basically, in our assembler language, it's very simple. It's opcode. LD in this case, followed by space, which I've used this little kind of um, way of representing here, angle brackets SP, followed by the register, in this case R2, followed by a comma, and then followed by the data. So it's opcode, register, comma, and then data. Now, you could actually get rid of that comma and just make it, you know, R2 space, and then the thing you could put in here, semicolon, full stop, whatever you want. This is a more traditional way to do it. If you're writing this assembly yourself or modifying the source code that I've put up there in GitHub, we'll talk about that in a minute, then you can modify this to any way you like. So now we need this assembler to turn these mnemonics into machine code. And some simple rules about the assembler. It's written in a text file, so you edit this in any kind of simple text file. It's one instruction per line, so there's no clever stuff about needing to know when one instruction ends and the next one starts. It's all on one line. And for every instruction, there are four bytes of machine code. So it's really easy. One line of uh, code in the assembly file is four bytes. And so we're going to use Python because that's a really easy way to process uh, this kind of text file. And basically inside of Python, this is kind of the pseudo code. What you've basically got is for every line in the file, you split it into tokens on space and comma. Now token basically means, you know, the LD or the R2 or the uh, 0x, FF, FF, something that's surrounded by space or punctuation. A key word, but really the better word is token. So what we end up then with is an array called uh, TOC, and we'll see this here, that's got three things in it. The first one is the opcode, 
the second one is a register, and the third one is the, the data value. So all you need to do is say, if TOC0, that's the, um, the code, the op code, if it's LD, then do something. If TOC0 is ST, that's store in our assembly language, then do something else. If it's compare, do something else. If it's, And you basically just write a huge if statement that just looks at the op code and then decides what it's gonna do when it sees each op code. And then inside of each if statement, all you basically do is this. You want to work out R for the register. So we've got R2. So here it's TOC1 because it's the uh, second uh, token in our list. And we want the second character. It starts from 0, so 0, 1. So 0 would be R and 1 is the 2. So basically this says get that number 2 and turn it into an integer. So R now contains the integer number 2. If it was load into R7, then that R would be 7. And then the second thing here, V for value, we take the third token, which is in uh, place number two, index number two, it's 0, 1, 2. And in this case, it was 0XFF, which is 65535. So take that and turn it into an integer. So basically, V now has got 65535 in it. And then finally, we want to create an array of four bytes. So I'm calling it B for bytes, B for binary, which contains the four bytes that we need to write out. So it's 0, 0, that's load. R is the register that we just uh, worked out here. Then V is split over two bytes. And what the right arrow, right arrow does is shift all the bits to the right by eight. So basically it will take the upper byte of those 16 bits, the upper eight bits, and shift them down into the lower eight bits. And then in the second part here, we use AND zero uh, XFF, which means I only want the bottom eight bits. So this basically splits that that 16-bit value into two 8-bit bytes, which can be written out uh, onto the uh, uh, machine code file. Now, I've got a whole video here on the Gary Explain channel about whether you should write the uh, upper byte first and the lower byte, or the lower byte first and then the upper byte. It's called Big Endian and Little Endian. I've got a whole video here. This machine that I've uh, designed here is a Big Endian machine, so we put the Big End first. So there we go, four bytes. One byte, two bytes, three bytes, and four bytes. Now we need to quickly talk about labels. Now as a quick cheat and a quick way to handle labels, what I do is I actually parse the assembly file twice. So we go through the assembly file the first time just looking for labels. And all it does is just uh, find out where they are. And a label is a line that starts with a dot. So dot label, that is a perfectly valid label. And all I do is I create an, a table, an array of label names and their addresses. And the addresses are really easy to work out because every line in the assembly file is a four byte instruction. So every time you move to the next line, you've gone four bytes on. Now, if you ignore comment lines and you ignore the label lines themselves, it's really easy to work out at which memory address these labels are appearing. And I have a function called parse labels uh, uh, in the uh, assembler file that I'm, that I'm putting on GitHub. So this is a quick cheat. Now you could do it in line as we were going through each line but I just found the easiest way was to pre-parse it and just grab all those labels so they're ready that when we meet them actually in the assembler, we already know what that value is. That's really easy. And so here's an, an example of our assembler. Uh, load R1 with 0x30. That's hexadecimal for the ASCII value of the, the letter zero, then the number zero, the digit zero. And then we have a label here, loop, which of course will be at address four. This first instruction will be 0, 1, 2, 3, first four bytes. Then this actually is address four. And in address four, we've got compare R1 with 0x39, which is also the uh, ASCII value for the digit nine. So has it got to nine yet? It compares it and sets the registers for the jump instruction in a minute, but we can still do another thing. So here we could do an add, add one to R1. So it then goes on to the next one and then it will jump if it's less than according to this compare here, we can, the flags have not been altered during this add instruction, branch if less than back up to loop. So this will basically loop round until we actually get to uh, zero X 39, then it will drop off out the bottom here and keep on going. Okay, so now that we've done that for LD, you've also seen their compare and you've seen labels. We can just repeat, uh, rinse, uh, repeat uh, this again and again and just do all the other instructions. And here is the table that we had at the end of the last video, which lists all of the instructions that we defined so far in our little uh, uh, CPU. And so we just need to basically create uh, assembly 
uh, for each of these and make the machine code understand it in the Python script to produce these four bytes. There are the four bytes are listed out for you. So it's really easy. It's literally it's just a case of when you see this op code, produce these four bytes. When you see this op code, produce these four bytes. It's a very simple uh, thing to do. And so the full code for the assembler is in GitHub. There is the address for you. Now the program itself is intentionally repetitive and verbose. It can be, uh, you know, modularized more. It can be optimized more. But I deliberately left it so it's really patently clear what it's doing. It's just a huge big if statement, okay? And that's good to get an understanding of how it's working. Okay, if we were to try to turn this into something maybe more complicated, we might want to do more modularization. We might want to optimize it a bit, um, create some more functions and so on. But really intentionally, I've left it repetitive and verbose so that you can see how it works at a very high level. Okay, so the next uh, video will be about how we take this machine code and write a CPU emulator based on the instruction set we've defined, based on the assembler that produces this code, and then we can have a little a little program that runs. We load that binary into our little set into our little CPU, and it will start working. That's a video coming very soon. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary explains. I really hope you like this video. Please do give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one. For your own CPU design in price. Oh, I was so close, so close.